Epiphone Joe Bonamassa 1962 ES335 Review Bonamassa and Epiphone need to do this more often. The Gibson Buckers allied to a quality build and components, not to mention the great backstory, make this a special instrument at the money. Just like the Lazarus Les Paul. What else is kicking around Nerdville that would be worth the Epiphone treatment? The mind boggles. Joe Bonamassa knows a good guitar when he sees one. And not all of them have to come from the halcyon days of the 50s and 60s. His long-standing partnership with Epiphone is proof positive that 21st century electric guitars make it into his collection too. Most recently, this partnership has borne fruit with the frankly superb signature guitar inspired by Lazarus, one of the more storied 1,959 Les Paul standards in his first collection. And here we have another stunner based on a classic from the Nerdville archives, the Joe Bonamassa 1962 ES335 that arrives out of the custom hard shell case resplendent in 60s cherry. The ES335 needs little introduction. It is one of the most successful and ripped off guitar designs of all time. Much love for the versatile platform it offers players. Sure, play jazz, play blues, play rock it will handle it all. And with that center block design, it can handle high volume without squealing in protest. This particular ES-335 is of special significance to Joe Bonamassa. Bonamassa is now, of course, a regular performer at the Royal Albert Hall, an alumnus of Abbey Road, and the undisputed highest-grossing blues guitar player of all time. But he wasn't always so. This 1,962 ES-335 is a guitar that dates back to when Bonamassa was just making his bones as a recording artist, purchased in 96, used to track his debut album, a new day yesterday, and thus has no small sentimental value. Not so much that Bonamassa could not be persuaded to part with it. As the story goes, he sold it in 2001 to finance his move out west. That in itself could be a blues song. Selling a much-loved guitar to do something practical and grown up. But when you move out to Los Angeles, the story arc has a way of offering up Hollywood endings, and sure enough, two decades after the release of A New Day Yesterday, Bonamassa was reunited with the guitar. It's a beaut and that. A Chinese-made ES-335 inspired by it is likewise, with the highlights including genuine Gibson USA pickups on it. You'll find a pair of burst buckers at the neck and bridge positions with the two-volume, two-tone controls, and three-way pickup selector controlling them. Spec-wise, we're looking at the body of five-ply laminated maple, finished nicely with single-ply cream binding, with condored spruce bracing it inside. The maple center block is there offering more ballast. That binding has similarly been applied to the Indian laurel fretboard. Proportions are classic Gibson. The fingerboard has a 12-inch radius, the guitar has a 24.75-inch scale, and the medium jumbo frets, the tops of which could use just a very quick once-over to smooth, no biggie, are familiar too. The weight is also what we've come to expect from these Epiphone semi-hollows. See Emily Wolf's signature share added, and the recently released BB King Lucille for reference. On the scales, Bonamassa's comes in at 8.71 pounds, which is chunky but hardly a deal breaker. Some of that weight could be attributed to the rounded C profile. It's a palm filler, very comfortable, and those who have grown accustomed to playing a slim taper neck will notice the difference. Elsewhere, we have a lock tone tune omatic bridge and a maestro vibrola so some gentle wobble is on the cards, a set of Epiphone Deluxe tuners with double ring butt tuners adorns the headstock. Epiphone has been making a habit of going large on the specs of these artist signature lines and Bonamassa's ES-335 is no different. Allied with the quality burst bucker pickups and the Maestro Vibrola, the components used here are all from the top shelf. The pickup selector and one or four inch output jack are both switchcraft. CTS pots and Mallory caps have been used in the wiring loom. As one reference, we plugged in our Gibson Les Paul Classic with its retrofitted burst buckers one at the neck and two at the bridge, and the Epi holds its own. The bridge pickup here is slightly less thin and the neck nicely balanced. Both really nail classic blues rock for which, frankly, this guitar seems tailor-made. But it's certainly not all about bluster. Both pickups clean up well. Or suit a cleaner guitar amp where, as ever, a good ES-335 seems to cover most bases. We or beat it against some other instruments that cost twice and three times as much, and we still couldn't find the catch. 